this kid who got into an accident and couldn't come to school but when he finally came back his hair had turned from black into bright white he said that it was from when the cars had crashed so hard Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Hmm 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 by the Crash Test Dummies. Fantastic tune, this one. I still remember when this one came out way back in 1993. Uh, beautiful song. You still hear it on the radio. It stood the test of time, this one, for sure. And it's got lots of beautiful things to learn in it. A really nice finger style pattern, a quite clever use of an open string to help with some of the difficult chord changes. You do need to know your bar chords and we need to use a bit of the thumb over technique for some of the bass notes, which are something you may find a bit tricky but it's definitely a technique that's worth learning. Um, the way I'm going to run it, I'm going to show you the intro first of all, both the chords and the finger picking patterns, because really once you've got the finger picking pattern down, you should be able to transfer it through the rest of the tune without too much problems. There's a couple of little variations. Uh, I have ever so slightly simplified the, the finger picking pattern. If you've got the tab, uh, it's in my pop song book. I do all of the intro and the, and the verses and choruses are tabbed out for you. Uh, so that would be very helpful. Otherwise, you might want to tab it out yourself. Uh, and there's just a a couple of little variations that are that kind of blow the pattern out a little bit and I don't really think it's worth trying to learn them exactly right because they're so subtle that uh, you know if, if you really want to get into it and play it just like the record then uh, you know use this as a template and go and do a little bit of transcribing you know using your ear to figure out those bits so uh, let's go to a close-up first of all we're going to check out the chords and then the finger style part <laughs> So there we have the intro, so let's run through those chords. We've got E minor for two beats first of all, then a B minor bar chord, back to E minor, back to B minor, and now we've got this F sus2. Okay, a little bit tricky for some of you maybe, we need to use the thumb to play the bass note. Okay, so thumb is just reaching around in the first fret first fret relative to the capo that is of course uh, and making sure you kind of grab it with the inside of your thumb just in this little part here it's kind of at the side of the thumb it's not don't try and grab it around flat like that it's very much this kind of the, the edge of the thumb that, that gets the note that's the kind of the trick I was on the wrong fret there but you get the right idea so thumb needs to be able to play that one note we've got the third finger going down in the third fret of the fourth string now, uh, a, a big deal with this third finger is to just push it up a little bit so it mutes the fifth string, but just moving it that tiny bit also allows you to get the open G string, the open third uh, string needs to be open. And then first finger is going down the first fret of the second string, uh, and that will also mute the thinnest string. We don't want to hear the thinnest string either. So we've got first fret, mute, third fret, open, first fret, mute. Okay, that's our F sus2 chord. Lovely chord this one. You can get a nice little hammer on with the second fret, not in this song, but... Very nice little lick that you might want to check out uh, while you're learning this chord, okay? So that's a F sus2, and it moves to a G sus4. Now to do that, we release the thumb. We don't need that bass note anymore. Third finger moves over to the note G. And the first thing is actually going to do a little hammer on, which gives us our G sus4. So we would have the. So first thing is just going to lift off and hammer on again. The fifth string should be muted by the underneath of the third finger there. So we've got third fret, muted note, open, open, first. Or it'll be open first with this little hammer. Okay, the thinner strings probably muted anyway by the underneath your third finger or the underneath your first finger, but we don't want to hear that note, so make sure that the thinner string is muted as well. So the intro again, E minor, B minor, E minor, B minor, F sus2, G sus4, F sus2, G sus4. You can see that especially between the F sus2 
and the GSUS 4, there's not a whole lot of moving to be done. So if you're moving a lot of your hand, then there's something wrong with the hand position. So try and get used to that, uh, you know, not having to move around too much. Now the other really cool thing here, we're gonna see it when we look at the picking pattern, is that we use this open D string as a transition chord. So when you play the E minor, we've got that open D, the open fourth string at the end of that. One and two and change and four, and open D again. And it's really nice to get used to that change. You've got that nice big gap there to get that B minor and the change to the E, open D. Sorry, that should have been a hammer on. Okay, let's have a look at the picking hand. Okay, so that picking pattern. We're starting off with the E minor chord. We're gonna be playing the thicker string with the thumb, then the fourth string with the first finger, and then second and third fingers are gonna be picking the second and third strings together. And then first finger is going to go back and play the D string, the fourth string. It will be open that time for the E minor. So we've got thumb, first finger, second and third fingers together. Then first finger comes back and plays the open D. You get used to that just on the E minor first of all. When we move to the B minor chord, it's exactly the same pattern, but the thumb's going to move over to play the bass note of the B, which is on the fifth string. So we play fifth string with the thumb, first finger, second and third fingers together, then the open D again with the first finger, the open fourth string. When you put that together, E minor, you've got the open D to change chord, B minor. The open D to change chord, back to E minor. Open D to change chord, going to B minor. Open D, now we're going to the F sus two. Thumb, one, two and three. And then first finger's playing that open D again while we transition to the G sus four. And then this time we got thumb, one, two and three. We'll play the open strings and we're gonna do that little hammer on and then the open D again. So F sus two. Open string, G sus4, back to F sus2, G sus4, E minor, B minor, open D, E minor, open D, B minor, open D, F sus2, open D, G sus4, back to F sus2, G sus4, Kid who ran into an accident and couldn't come to school, but when he finally came back, his hair had turned from black into bright white. He said that it was from when the cars had crashed so. So let's go through those chords. There's some interesting things going on here. So just the chords straight, really simple first. Two beats of A minor, two beats of G. Now G, you can, I generally would recommend playing this with just the third finger. Third finger's muting the fifth string, open, open, and then third finger, uh, sorry, little finger will sometimes go down on the third fret of the second string, or it could go down the third fret of the thinner string, which would give us that open B. And it's kind of different at different parts of the song. I think mostly I like it with the sound of the little finger on the third fret of the second string. Okay, that would be my preference. So A minor to G to C to C with an E bass. Now I'm listing off my third finger there, but I didn't really need to. I'm using my second finger to mute the fifth string, but we're really, we're aiming for that low E note, okay? The open sixth string, okay? So from regular C 
to C with an E bass. You could leave the third finger there and play it, but I just tend to like taking it off and using my second finger to mute that fifth string, just to make sure that they're not ringing out together, because if that C's ringing out while you play that, it just tends to sound a bit more muddy than having... Keeps it kind of clear what's happening with the chords. Then we've got F. Now, again, you could play regular big bar chord F, but you know, in this context of this tune, it's a, you can see that it makes a lot less movement if we use the thumb over three, two, one in the third fret, second fret, and first fret. It's just really the same notes as this, but using the thumb over to play the bass. Then to C, to G, to C, to F, for a whole bar that time, to G, to C. G, C. Now there's a little variation that happens on the next F. Okay, that's tabbed out for you in the book and I will run through it with you, but it's a regular F chord, little, the, kind of the smaller F, you could play the big one if you want, but I think you want that movement of, of having the bass note all the way up here on the fourth string just for that one F chord. Okay, that's the little movement. It's going from the F, little fingers going down on the note G, C, to G. There's a little variation there on the G as well. G, and then a little hammer on with the second finger on the second fret of the fifth string. A flat bar chord, so that's four frets up from the capo, okay? So the big deal here, the thing to remember with the A flat, especially going from the G, is that you've got that open D string to transition to the A flat, and then the open string transition again to get to the C. Open D transition to get to the A flat. It's a really, you know, super useful thing. Without that open D, it would be a really difficult transition to get from C to the A flat. But as soon as you've added in that open D between them, works out real nice. And then at the end of the verse, we've got this G over F, which is a, basically a G triad, the open second, third, and fourth strings, with the bass note of F. Okay? You could use a different finger if you really wanted to, but I think, you, again, you probably want to be using your thumb. And then put those fingers down so you're playing a regular F. Okay, let's run through that one more time. So A minor, G, C, C with an E bass, F, C, G to C, and then F. Going to G to C, G, C, F, C, G. A flat to C. A flat to G with an F bass to F. And then the chorus is the same as the intro. Okay, so let's just run through that one more time nice and slow. A minor, G, C, with an E bass, F to C, G to C, F, so twice around the little finger picking pattern, G to C. G to C, F, C, G. A flat, C, A flat to G with a F bass to F.
And while we're on the close-up of this, I'll show you the chords for the middle part as well, which is strummed. It's D minor chord. But both girl and C were G. D minor. Cause one kid had it C, then G to F sus2. And the F sus2, just to warn you, is a bar of 2-4 and a bar of 4-4. Four, four. So the verse, next verse pattern starts a little sooner than you might think. But, uh, you know, you'll hear that if you start playing along with it, that uh, the F sus2 there is cut a little bit short. Uh, let's have a look at the picking hand there for the verses. A minor. G. C. C with an E bass. To F. C, G, C, to F, to G, to C, G, C, here's the variation, F, C, G, I'm going to do that bit in a, slower in a second, A flat, to C, A flat to G over F, twice through to F, twice through. Okay, that one little variation. Uh, so we've got the F, we've moved the bass note up to the fourth string. We play fourth string, third string, then the two thinner strings together with third and fourth fingers. Little finger goes down and we play the thinner string again. Now on the bar, we change to C, and we're playing the fifth string and the thinner string together, then the second string, then the first string. Little finger goes down on the note G, uh, note D, which is the third fret, which is the start of that G chord. Okay, F, extra note C. Little finger goes down third fret second string. G, hammer, back to G, okay, so that G, now here, we play the open fifth string, hammer the second finger down, second fret fifth string, and finish the pattern, nice pattern that anyway, actually, again, remember that we're using that open D to transition when we're doing the A flat, it's really important that you get that open D to help you with the transitions between the chords. This is one of those tunes that's definitely a lot easier to have a tab in front of you. Uh, if you haven't got it, the tab again is in the uh, Justin Guitar Pop Songbook, along with uh, 50 other, or 49 other really cool tunes that you might like, many of which have uh, video lessons already. So you, you will find it easier to have the tab there Hopefully I've done it slow enough for you to pick it up even if you don't have the tab. Uh, but, uh, you know, beautiful tune. The big deal with all of these kind of picking patterns is just doing them slowly and accurately to start off with. You're much better off kind of keeping it real slow and making sure that you get it right. Because if you start speeding up and every time you make a mistake, it's kind of you're practicing making the mistake and it kind of becomes harder to uh, shake eventually. So much better off always doing stuff like this real slow. I had to when I was learning it, you know, I transcribed it and then sat down, listened to it and played it real slow you know it can be a little bit of a funny one to sing and play as well because uh, the vocals pretty difficult and uh, you know in a funny range and stuff so you have to think about that and really make sure that the the finger picking is kind of pretty well automated before you start singing so I uh, hope you enjoy playing this tune and I'll see you for plenty more very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye <laughs>